Alright guys, welcome back to the channel and more news on WWE 2K23 as a new interview with WCCFTech.com has revealed a lot of new info including news on this year's roster size, a DLC tease, graphical updates and the PC version as well as talk of what's to come in WWE 2K24. Before we get into any of that though, if you're new to the channel and you want to stay up to date with all the latest news on WWE 2K23, then please do hit that subscribe button and turn on your notifications so that you don't miss out on future videos. So today we're going to be rounding up some new details from a new interview with WCCFTech.com as WWE Games Creative Director Lionel Jinx and Associate Gameplay Producer Brian Williams have shared some new information on this year's changes as well as going on to talk about the future and the upcoming competition from AEW. Now I'm not going to go over the full interview as there's a lot of info in there that's repeated but I'm going to pull out some of the key parts starting out with what was said to be this year's mission statement as Brian Williams was asked about the direction of 2K23 following several improvements to pace and fluidity last year and whether that's a path that the developers want to continue down to make the game faster, smoother and a bit more arcadey. Responding to the question, Brian said that that was absolutely the case and that the development team got the ball rolling with WWE 2K22 in terms of bringing this franchise back to where it should be, adding that it all starts with responsiveness, the fluidity of the animations, the snappiness of the motions and the impact when you collide with the mat. He then shared that Lionel Jinx told him at the start of 2K23 that their mission statement was to keep that momentum going for 23 and that they didn't want to backpedal on what they started with 2K22. Instead, the aim for 23 was to polish all areas of the game and get it looking and playing fantastic. In regards to making the game look fantastic, Lionel Jinx was asked about the update to the game visually and how it looks to be a step up from 2K22. Jinx noted that every year they try to experiment and that that's the freedom of working on a yearly cycle that you get the opportunity to improve. In regards to the improvements to this year's game, Jinx put a lot of the improvements down to lighting, adding that the director is messing around with the lighting and adding hints of accent lights to really get that light right. He also talked about the visual look of the 2K showcase and trying to replicate historic matches with the same feel and atmosphere, comparing it with what NBA 2K did with the Jordan Challenge. If you've seen footage of the RVD match with Cena in this year's 2K showcase, then you'll see what Jinx means as the lighting for that match is visually different to the matches shown in current arenas as 2K are continuing what they started with 2K22 and giving classic arenas a different appearance visually to try and recreate the atmosphere of that time. That's something that I think they did a great job with in 2K22 as classic arenas like the Smackdown 2009 arena looked more like they did in the SVR games with darker lighting that set them aside from the modern day. In terms of lighting, this is one of the areas that's going to be a big talking point when the game releases as the footage that we've seen so far has been captured on PC and next gen versions with this footage showcasing the lighting updates that utilise ray tracing technology to offer up realistic lighting effects and real time reflections. Whether those features are something that we'll see on last gen consoles though is something that remains to be seen as generally the PS4 and the Xbox One don't support ray tracing though some games such as Crisis Remastered has been able to replicate ray tracing on a software level. As for the PC version of the game, when asked if it would feature next gen elements, Jinx confirmed that the PC version is able to offer up the same level of graphics seen on next gen consoles though it all depends on how good your graphics card is. Based on that, if you have a new RTX graphics card then you'll likely be able to max the graphics out and have them appear like they do in the next gen versions, however if you have an older graphics card then you'll have to tone down the graphics which may give you a version that resembles last gen. After discussing the PC version, Brian Williams was asked about the changes to the pin system to which Brian said, the pin is everything and I think with the system we've done this year it's made it more difficult for an old hand like me because there's actually some skill involved. Kicking out of somebody's finisher is genuinely tense, especially if you're kicking out of more than one. That target zone, when it starts moving at the speed that it does and you're trying to catch it, it's possible but when you miss it, the defeat feels fair and the kick out, if you get it, it feels much more rewarding. Brian also went on to reveal that the developers did internal surveys with the entire team to get feedback on the minigame and help them decide whether or not it should be the default option. Those surveys clearly went well as the new pin system is the default option in 2K23 though players that preferred the old button bashing minigame will still be able to switch back to it in the options. 
At this point in the interview, the developers were asked about the future and what new features they'd like to pursue in future games now that they have the foundations firmly in place. Answering the question, Brian Williams stated that usually when they start pre-production on the next game, the first thing they do is go back and pick up what they wanted to do last year that they didn't have the bandwidth for, therefore they've already got a bunch of ideas as they never discard them, they're always left on the table for future use. As for specific updates, one area Brian said was high up on his list was the ability to perform dives onto groups of people as he feels that this would be a great addition for the newly added War Games match as it would allow a player to take out a large group of people which would then help clear the way to end the match. Pulling things back to 2K23, the interviewer asked Jinx how many superstars we can expect to see in this year's game. Responding to the question, Jinx said the only thing that he can say is that it's more than 2K22. As for how many superstars that equates to, including DLC, WWE 2K22 featured 222 playable characters, though some of them seen multiple versions of the same character such as Alexa Bliss and Alexa Bliss 21. Elaborating on his answer, Jinx added that if we keep going at this rate, 2K24 will have even more than 2K23 because WWE keeps signing a ton of talent. He also added that a lot of familiar faces are coming back to WWE that he's excited about, with Cody Rhodes being one of them for 2K23. Jinx also briefly touched on DLC plans, where he noted that they have DLC plans in place that they haven't yet announced and that he thinks that they're going to make people really happy and that the future is bright. He later added that when they do their main roster reveals, there will be some omissions on there that you'll be scratching your head about, but to wait and see as he thinks most people will be happy. That note from Jinx is a pretty interesting one as it hints that there'll be some expected superstars that are missing from the base game with the plan potentially being to then add them as DLC. That could be similar to what we've seen in 2K22 as Cactus Jack was removed from the base game and then offered up as DLC with a brand new character. As for who Jinx could be alluding to, given the amount of stars who've recently returned to the company, it could be any number of stars, though the one name most people will think up is Bray Wyatt, as Wyatt's return came pretty late in the development cycle, therefore there's a good chance that he may have missed the cut and that 2K may hold him back for DLC so that they can then include his most recent appearance or perhaps even a DLC pack that's dedicated to Wyatt with multiple characters. Lastly, the interview also seen Jinx asked about the upcoming competition from AEW as AEW Fight Forever is set to release sometime this year. Speaking on the competition, Jinx said he loves competition and that when he started with NBA 2K, he spent 10 years going up against NBA Inside Drive, NBA Shootout and NBA Live and that every year they would look at what the other games did and then compare them to themselves. He then went on to say that in wrestling especially, competition is a good thing as it leads to better storylines and that he thinks that that's something that's also true in video games, therefore he's looking forward to seeing what AEW do as it's going to drive them on to be even stronger. So that's a full recap of the interview, there was some interesting bits in there, especially the notes on the PC version, the roster omissions and the DLC. So let me know in the comments what you make of this new info and in the same question posed to Brian Williams, what are you hoping to see added in the future? Let me know your thoughts in the comments and if you're new to the channel and you want to stay up to date with all the latest news on WWE 2K23 then please do hit that subscribe button and turn on your notifications so that you don't miss out on future videos. Until next time though, thank you so much for watching, have yourself an awesome day and I'll catch you later.